Hello, I'm Robin Vincent and welcome to Malta Music Technology here at the very end of the Tonum Synth Reactor thingy that we've been at. And uh, my last go at it is to uh, have a bit of a poke at soft tube parallels and maybe more. I'm not sure. We're here with Lars, uh, who's going to show us around it. Now, parallels is a, it's a synthesizer of some kind, which came out just before I left. In fact, I wrote it up as a news item just before I got on the plane, really. And so I've never heard it. I don't know what it's about other than the, the spec sheet and the press release. So I'm quite intrigued to understand what this big orange knob thing is about. Because, you know, orange is good <laughs> orange in, is in good. my view. <laughs> but uh, so, yeah, Lars, thanks for, for joining me here at this late hour. As thanks all... for inviting me here at oh, this late hour. I could be on train right now. I'm yeah, kidding. I know. It's, it's, it's uh, dope to, to be here. We're, we're all completely <laughs> knackered uh, at this point. But... You know, we're just going to take some moments and uh, have a feel through to see what this thing is all about. So first of all, give us a bit of a background to it. So I think it's, it's yeah. got a bit of a story. You know, the thing is, um, I got the synthesizer myself only a couple of days before. <laughs> and I had to figure it out how it works at nighttime here in the hotel room over the last four or five days. Oh, well, that's, that's dedication. <laughs> but I, I can tell you a little bit about the background because I think it's nice to have a synthesizer that is on the one hand, digital and within your DAW, but that has an actual storyline behind mm. it, you know? Because uh, Softube contacted this guy, uh, Johan Anthony from uh, from Stockholm, who is like one of the craziest, most beautiful, filled up uh, synthesizer stores, right. with vintage gear. And oh, Johan nice. actually said, you know what? I have so beautiful, such beautiful devices. Why don't we make, if we have to make a synthesizer based on the stuff that's in my store? Now, Everybody would think, okay, another preset synth based on samples. Yeah, samples. In a sample. in a way, we have samples, but it's not like Johan took a bukla and made a kind of a weird twisted sawtooth and sampled that, or took a Juno 106 and put a pulse pulse wave and sampled this. No, what he did, he recorded motions, whole motions through right. sound. You know. And those motions that are approximately between 15 and 20 seconds right. are the actual waveform. And now, uh, I forgot the actual term, how they call it, because it's four, been four days of synthesizers and oscillators. Yes. <laughs> but I, I would call them, in a way, wavetables or just sample oscillators. What we can do, right. with, for instance, with the orange knob right now, it's actually not per definition orange. It depends on what kind of source you're actually using. So oh, I will show okay. you about a little bit later about this. They have different color codes for different kinds oh, of see. timbres. Right, yeah. you know? So um, the idea is also that you can scan through these motions in whatever fashion you prefer. Let's start with a very simple wave, okay? Yes. It's like a, they call it vintage square. Is it activated? Let's find out. So if we now hit the one shot button, it means that it starts from, from the beginning of the sample to play back until the end. And we hear the motion that you and Anthony in the store recorded. Got the idea? And it's no uh, filter included, and it's not. It's it's just the oscillator that is doing this for me. So this this geezer, this bloke <laughs> in Stockholm, uh, he's essentially made creative decisions over these over the length of these samples and what's gone on with them. I think they agreed to some point that that they want a more or less 15, 20 seconds. Yeah, yeah. And, and so what we're seeing, this is a, a representation of the sample going around the dial. Is that exactly. right? Exactly, and right. and also the physical shape represents probably more body, less body to the sound. You will see other waves that have oh, very oh, interesting oh, yeah. shells. And yeah, because this yeah. is a very basic waveform. Yeah, this is very... <sighs> but I want to explain something with a very basic waveform Good, because yeah. something very interesting about the oscillator itself is that you can scan through it in whatever fashion you prefer. And in this, because it's an audio sample, it's kind of a granular synthesis because you you know you can go back and forth in time whatever you prefer yes. you know so let's do it let's get let's get rid of the one shot and then you actually hear some kind of they are wanted but they are artifacts you can hear some audio artifacts how we now stay at this over the same part of the motion sequence yeah and that's very wavetable and that's very very wavetable yeah. yeah. so itself is already pretty cool I think you know that you can find for, for ah, let me let me say just one introductionary note before 
What I really love about this interface um, is that, I mean, it's Swedish clean. They're mm -hmm. famous for that. Oh, yeah. But you don't see a single number except the number of the wavetable that you're using. It's all the parameters. Everything is really clean and, mm -hmm. and user-friendly. You can touch it. You can grab it. Once you're over a button, you get a floating number that says you where you are. And oh, I see. Yeah, but yeah. If, you, if you compare it to some other... Uh, DAW uh, integrated synthesizers or some even more famous ones you know I don't want to say names sometimes it's overladen with numbers yeah. and everything and you have to find your way around yes. actually it's it's the idea is to have a complex sounding synthesizers with very easy control mm. you know and if you want you can activate deeper sections but that's how it comes very clear very yeah. simple I mean I was immediately attracted to the interface I have to say you know as I say I didn't get to hear it but I did get to uh, do screenshots and have a look at that and I thought uh, yeah I immediately thought it was a very interesting look uh, you know there's three you're obviously drawn to these three things exactly uh, right. which seem to be or seem to suggest you've got two sound sources and a mix between them but otherwise there's the, it's not parameter heavy at all as you say with a lot of soft synths there's a whole stack of information yeah. being projected at you so yeah. yeah I was taken with that immediately. so cool yeah to hear that so but for a second just let's stick with a simple waveform I uh, no, no. We we can we can skip through the basic categories that we have. Let's stay. Let's stick to one oscillator right now. Okay. So we have these different categories that have different colors. Digital right. synth wave green, uh, orange for the analog. Combo is like mixed waves. Chords. It's it's actually self-explaining. Drones is mm -hmm. really more overtone laden, crazy stuff. FM is interesting. We come to that later. So f right now we we can just skip here through some different ways and. Let's go to the one-shot mode that we can always hear like how they sound. We heard that. It's a triangle. There's obviously not so much overtone but coming in. So like this. But let's go for instance to this wave and let's see how it sounds. I have no idea. a crazy waveform isn't it <laughs> what's what's the thing going around the outside is that level or uh, no that's the, actually you mean the other side that's yeah, the level that's got... the, that's the volume level that you see right because sometimes the waves also have glitches with volume and it's always represented by this okay. little fella yeah good. but that's the scanning device that yes. goes uh, yeah, I get that yeah, yeah yeah okay of course you got it yeah, get that <laughs> so that's a pretty crazy waveform and i could imagine finding a sound myself to f to just uh, because you can easily select like a certain timbre that you want to start your sound programming with mm -hmm. for now i would go with the analog thing you know because i already have something in the back of my mind yeah yeah yeah, yeah. so so let's just go let's find a term but that's not too dull because right here it's so dull that you don't even hear yeah, yeah. even that's wanted you know so let's go with that okay we stay here now we got very easy to use filter section you know you can either grab it oh right that's what that is i thought that was decoration no oh, i see and, and, i see and, and it's nice filters with beautiful resonance yeah and sweet spot throughout you know like oh, letter, letter filter style yeah, yeah. Like this, this is like this shows these these little segments show something i think it's the how you call it yeah because there's four things there a, oh yeah, yeah look there yeah yeah i haven't figured this out with yeah. another filter i don't it looks know. nice though yeah. whatever that is that's a lovely exactly thing. so let's leave it like that okay. okay four days wasn't enough to figure everything out <laughs> you got the uh, state variable filter to do different things so here, a high pass out yeah. of it we can make a band pass out of it and we can can we make a low pass out of it i forgot yeah, yes we can and now we're here we're here in a low pass yeah. so that's also cool you know and we got this resonant filter that's really beautiful that got, gets you all kinds of form and kind of things pretty yeah. cool yeah i'm really digging the interface i have to say it's, yeah uh, and what really i always always do f myself is because I'm, I'm working a lot with Ableton it takes you like a second to to hit the config button and grab a parameter let's say like because I already uh, put the, the, f the frequency let's go to the in this case to the tilt frequency and it's already here on my controller you know 
so it should be uh, that's not working oh let's go to low pass this was the mistake so configure and get this fellow over here See, I know Ableton Live is, is one of the, the, the dead easy thing that everybody uses. It always takes me at least three goes to map any controller in Ableton. It's just the nature of things. It hates it's me the first time. Second time I go, ah, and then it's the wrong one. And the third time I get it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's just you, you my see, way. You see, funny thing, you know, I'm touching stuff here. Right now it's not corresponding. It's new. Probably it's something. <laughs> but whatever. You, we get good sounds of it. Anyway. Stick with we that get it. sound, okay? The cool thing, before we start even talking about effects and modulation, we have a second oscillator. Yes. And you can do all, ah, uh, there's envelopes as well, of course, very easy to use. So we can, have, we can make them shorter, a bit techy. Mm. One question that occurs to me is that when you've been scanning through the wave, yeah, um, you're having a very quite a small part of the wave as your wave table. Yeah, uh, can, is it like a sampler in much you could start you could set a start and end point and use a yeah. larger chunk of the of the of the, the 15 second sample? I mean, it, when you do one shot, you go through the whole got the thing. whole lot. Is this if you in go, between, ah, also, of course, of course. Also, still, you you're absolutely right. Let's stick to one oscillator right now. You know, <laughs> so you can you have a very simple envelope for the wave scanning process. Yes. Right now we have zero mount, but now if we attach like fifty percent, and let's say it takes it it should take us th three seconds. You know, right. more or less three seconds to get through the fifty percent. <laughs> Then it goes to 50% and it goes back right. by the decay that we set here. So we could also go for three th seconds. If that's not crazy enough for us, uh, yeah, we just right. we just rise the amount. But this way it okay. always comes back. If we want to have it more uh, in a way that we want to let it rise and stay there, we could adjust. We could just assign the the modulation amount to a to an envelope that stays. Just put a long amplitude mm -hmm. rising, you know, and then just stay. But right now, it's meant to be that it should come back. <laughs> yes, <laughs> it's like you set your timbre, and it's just a journey and a return. Okay. It's a bit like that. Okay? Yeah, I get it. So, okay, that's pretty much one oscillator. You can, what else you have is like a basic vibrato that you can put on it to hide a little bit the granular artifacts in between, which is pretty cool, you know, but, you know, right now I think this raw kind of th thing that's going mm. on when you, when you stay over one, when you scan over one certain portion of the sound, is pretty cool, you know, yeah. this kind of granular sound, because it makes the sound very raw and interesting. Okay, so long story short, we have a second oscillator that we could just blend in, you see? I like Beautiful. it. Beautiful. Yeah, so we're I here. Like all that. Now we're on the second oscillator mm -hmm. only because the other one faded away. Yeah. You know, lovely. and that's that's now that we have a very classic, very simple waveform, let's do some like like some opposite stuff. Mm -hmm. So I load it in uh, a digital wavetable here. Ah, it's on one shot mode. Oh, so let's listen to it, but from start to finish. So you see the mm. volume was yes. represented yes. here, right? Yeah, yeah. So I would say, let's switch off one shot mode for a second and just find a portion that, that might blend in nice with the with the lower timbre of the square wave that yeah. we have on top. So let's let's go for some overtones, I would say, just to find out how that sounds, you know? Yeah. And all of a sudden, I was still here on a mount, you see? That's why it's not staying at the same portion. So, yeah, quite like and that. it already starts to, to get a little more interesting, yeah. you know. And now, let's say, because we want the basic waveform, which is still the, the orange oscillator, it's, this is pretty much a quiet wave, to be honest, yeah. But let's, let's uh, modulate that a little bit. So, once you're over this section, uh, there's a free-floating window. Right. And you oh, just yeah. go and say, we want like this kind of 30%. And then we decide what modulation source. We got this four modulation source, very easy. 
Oh, it's already right. yeah, yeah. it's assigned to modulation slot A. Uh -huh. We could also say B. Let's go for A. And now activate modulation source A. And that's the LFO. Yeah. Nice and easy. You say? Yes. We could be a little, little more dramatic, I think, and go for that and have likes. You know, and, and the funny thing, it becomes like one oscillator sound-wise for me, you know, if you work like this. To me, it feels more like, like some, some wave folding stuff or something like that's going yeah. on with it or some, some sinking, some hard sinking that's mm -hmm. on, going on on top of it, you know. So they somehow, even though all those waveforms are so different, they kind of uh, complete each other quite nicely and don't sound like two things that have nothing in common. Mm -hmm. You can always find with a blending. In this case, a 50-50 blending probably wouldn't make too much sense because yeah, it that little baby power. here is just too, slow, too, too quiet, yes. you know, so too subtle, you know. So yeah. pretty interesting stuff that you can do. Very quickly, and you have you, you can find by by this combi because it's not a combination like we all know, like sawtooth plus sine wave underneath yeah. sawtooth plus pulse. It's really you can make your own kind of uh, uh, wave uh, waveform combinations that that are become like your own ex way of expressing yourself yes. sound wise. You know, yeah. so I found that really interesting. You know, and we haven't even added effects and just mm. very very basic modulation. Well, I mean, I, I'm really liking the the focus on the oscillator because one of the one of my takeaways from this this event is that I really gravitate towards the basics. Um, whereas, Thank you. I I totally hear you, <laughs> especially <laughs> well, be, because I mean I've played a lot of synths in the last few days, lots yeah. of big sounds from everything, and every time, uh, you know, after your first couple of minutes, going, oh, yeah, this sounds lovely, trying to just drag it down to where are the oscillators? How can I put those two together? How you know how how well do they fit how do they sound together and then you apply little bits and little bits and build it up from there yeah. and this and software synthesis doesn't often encourage you to do that because you have this page of all this stuff and the biggest knob is always the cut off and that's yeah. what you play with for instance i um when when we later turn on like uh, all the effects or skip through p presets it's got a pretty phenomenal huge sound if you mm. want you know but uh, but you get there like in a minute or in two minutes. And that doesn't mean that it's like made for idiots, yes. you know, because I hate stuff like this that is, oh, we get a great sound. And yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. no, no, no. You have to find your own way around, but yeah. they help you to make it quick. Yeah. You know, I mean, it's you can quick. check out the, the big sounds in the, yeah. all the promotional videos, which are no doubt out yeah. there. By now. <laughs> so we're looking at the, 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 the fun with oscillators part of it. Yeah, but it reminds me uh, when you get to the complex sounds, it could remind you of, of something that sounds a bit like the Abyss, a very, very famous soft sense that I don't want to actually say the real name but it sounds a bit like okay. the abyss yeah yeah all right. and you got like 10 trillion parameters and when you tweak one nothing actually happens because you have to tweak one trillion parameters mm -hmm. to get and and here it's everything is is makes more sense you know because two or three parameters and you get a t completely different sound and you still can get very subtle very complex and find your real own unique way so that that's quite interesting yeah. for me so let's add some stuff right just to hear what else we could do of course we can we can set up a little more interesting uh, because this is a m maybe more of a pad sound later on and just make the amplitude just a little more slowly rising. So then I, I had the filter, I had too much filter on it here, sorry. Now we can bring, now it's actually too much, you know? So a lot, of, lot to play with the upper structures of the sounds itself, you know? Can you link uh, oscillator one and two in as much as, rather than having to play with two filters, you can play with just one globally? 
Similar it's, with the I had the same question. Oh, did you? I had the what same question, say? and it's weekend over there in Sweden. <laughs> <laughs> I, I uh, posted the same question to Christopher, to Crawford, who's actually involved with the development of it. Uh, right now, it doesn't look like you okay. have a, you have an overall filter, which would make sense. Okay, but but no, we like the patch, right? So let's let's complete it. Let's complete the patch at least. And bring some nice because Softube is known for like real yeah. beautiful sounding plugins. So they have a real big sounding reverb. You can have like have the thing going on forever. because it's getting like complex overtones and all that. So that's stuff that you could do with this nice chorusing to give more stereo spread. <laughs> so the, I mean, the other question would be, because it's very popular at the moment, does it have its own sequencer? Does it have its own per step automation and crazy rhythmic things going on? Uh, yes, it has. It, it's, it doesn't have like a step sequencer for 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 notes, right. for pitching, but it has a, a, a it has a modulation source. It has actually the Euclidean rhythm. Oh right, modulation nice. source, and it also has a sequence. A sequencer. Oh, a step so sequencer. in the modulation side, you've got that as opposed to yeah. yeah. But okay, you can great. you could actually attach. Could you attach attach the pitch? Of course, you could attach the pitch. I suppose. I mean, it's, it, it's yeah. just one of those things yeah. which I always find odd because you're you're always running these software synthesizers normally inside a door, which sole function is to sequence, and they all seem to these days come with their own little sequencer at the bottom as well. So yeah, but but you know. what, what could be quite interesting. Uh, to, to attach like filter parameters or something like this to to, to the rhythmic sequence. Yes, With, no, you know? certainly. So yeah. let's 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 just try and go for for this and let's go to D. Yeah, so I mean that makes total sense to me as opposed to a note sequencer. I guess is what I'm getting at. Because you already have that. Because, I mean, what I'm enjoying is the fact that we've built that up from nothing, as opposed to, yeah. here's an enormous preset we're going to tweak a little bit, and, you know, look at how rhythmic this is, and you would not have discovered where all those things came from. But that, I think that's part of the fun, isn't it? To, to yeah. just make it, to to start from scratch. Absolutely. Uh, yeah. as, as great as the presets are, because we had some really great programmers for the preset, like Richard Devine. People of course. Who are, yeah, they write. Richard goes for like every knob 100%. Yeah. Kind of every modulation source is included. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and there's other more clear presets. Uh, we got BT and we got yeah. uh, Inhalt, who also did some great patches. Yeah. But just let's. let's <laughs> you want to check out three or four? No, I, I think we'll run out of time. But okay. uh, I mean, though, honestly, uh, to the world out there, those sorts of things don't really do anything for me. I mean, every soft synth that comes out has a list of all these people who have done presets for them, which is awesome, and I would love to be one of those people, but uh, it doesn't, it's not something which makes me go, oh, I must get that synth, because sadly, perhaps, all these people seem to be doing it for everybody. It's almost like there's this pool of sound designers who get employed for all these things. So, um, but to, to be honest, I mean, I think, I think you need them, but personally, I, yes. don't, I don't see the fun in it as well. Yeah. It I was mean, fun when you had two or three of those devices, but now that our hard drives and our studios are yeah. overladen with, with devices, it just doesn't make sense to, yeah. to, to buy a thing that has like 500 presets yeah. or like 10,000 samples. You need a you know? showcase. You, need, you yeah. need a collection of stuff that shows you what it's, what's possible. Yes. And then you can get stuck in, I think. But, yeah. uh, that's been awesome. Thank you very much, so much for Thanks staying so here long you. enough to show me this. And I'm going to look forward to uh, playing with this a lot more. And maybe I'll do a review. Who knows what the future holds. Uh, but that's probably it, I think, from Tone and Synth Reactor. From my point of view, there's been 
25 of us here making videos and stuff. There's tons and tons of content out there from all these really strange people who I've thoroughly enjoyed getting to know over the last few days. So go and check out more stuff from the Tome and Synth Reactor. And in the meantime, go and make some tunes. Play us out. Do I still... It's a wrap, somebody take me home. <laughs>